It's not a matter of if it's going to break, it's a matter of when it's going to break. And this week, three things, the fan, the washer, and the toilet. It's RV inspection day. I'm just kidding. It's RV DIY day. You know what they say, when it rains, it pours. There's one thing about RV life. It's not if something's going to break, it's when. And this week was three things. The fan, the washing machine, and the sh toilet. So man oh man, Pierre's got some DIYs to share with you today. Something recap. I don't have my costume on, so that should give you an idea. My beard's not done, I don't have my costume, so this is about what happened after inspection. After a while of using it, after a while of living in it, as you may know, we live full time in here. So once in a while you gotta figure out what happens. You gotta maintain this. So there's a couple of things that happened since last week that we're gonna try to walk you through. Simple, but this is the fun part of living full time. So let's get to it. So first things first. This week we had the washer dryer. Well, it was just a washer. Uh, then I had this fan. Then I had the toilet. When it rains, it pours. So this was the beginning this week. So this little motor here, some of you have this one. There's two little screws, one here and one here. As you can tell, there's a black one and there's a little white one. So this came with two little white ones. But what happened is if you do a little white one like this, by the way, you can order those little motors and that wasn't my problem. But this little screw, if it has plastic at the bottom, it's ripped off. So there's no more thread because this is just a kind of a little tube channel that is plastic. So what you do, see this one, I took a longer screw. So I got about an inch, an inch and a quarter that now grips into that pipe tube, so it fixed it. So that was it, so that was a short one. Next thing, we have a washer here. This is an old Whirlpool, and I, we didn't take a video of this because I changed this a couple of days ago. We bought a home washing machine. Those are powerful. They're not like RV, meaning when you put spin on low, the whole camper wants to go up. That's interesting. That's my first time trying this out. I'll actually do this this afternoon, but I'll put a frame in the back so the, the washer doesn't end up in the bedroom or maybe in the kitchen. I don't know where it's going to go, but now I was trying to run away from its square, so I'm going to try to capture it, put it in there. Pierre, what are you doing in my closet? Are you in the closet again? Just kidding. As you can see, he has to reach back there in that hole, digging behind there, unplugging, and making sure that everything is unplugged so that he can actually get the dryer and the washer out of that small hole using those muscles doing it all by himself the one thing about Pierre he is a hard worker and he's never going to ask for help so who has to ask for help that's me and when he brought in the washing machine the first time he wanted me to help him it was so dang heavy I left him I said I've got to go find somebody in this park and I found a guy who happened to be outside dealing with his fire pit and he came over and gladly helped Pierre get that washing machine in the first time but you can see it's heavy and he's gonna get that out so he can build that frame so that that washing machine doesn't take our camper over the top of some hill one day what are you gonna use to cut a hand saw yeah All right, so as you can see, I've cut with what I had for tools here. So I've cut this block at about 10 inches. I'm gonna to try to dispatch this so it ends up being a square where my washing machine will go in there and stay in there. See, the problem I have with a house washing machine, this is soft. So it's not like your floor in your garage or in your basement. The RV washing machine don't spin like a house washing machine. The advantage is it doesn't spin your clothes as much, so that's why it takes more time to dry. But this is an experiment. I've never done this in an RV, but we're trying it. 
I'm not going to tell you how much we paid for the washing machine, but let's say it was really affordable. Just statement, there's a vent here in the back of your washing machine. So this will be the access from your kitchen. See, ours would be the kitchen sink is right there. There's one in the kitchen sink underneath your sink, but there's also one here. Since I can't access this one easily unless I go from my hole over there, which is hard to reach. My arm's probably not long enough. So I have to come from the kitchen sink underneath. So just saying so, if ever you wondered if you had one, you do have one there. And in the back here, I don't know, maybe we can see. See, there's another one right there. That's why I swapped. I swapped those two and I'll change the one underneath the sink. So this one, well, and remember you had one there. Now it's just a question of measurement. Now I'm gonna figure out where my studs are underneath this and I'll just mark them down. And then I'll take my width of my washing machine. Then I'll just slide it back in there and it's gonna stay there on, the, on its own. I'm not gonna anchor the washing machine. It's heavy enough, it can do the job enough. Let me just figure out where I'm gonna put my marker, where my cross member are underneath here and we'll take it from there. Now I'm just gonna walk you through what I did. This is me. This is how my floor is and my setup is. This is what I have. I took my two by four. I lined up underneath where I have cross member. So from here, there's a cross member here. Here I got a cross member here and here's the same thing. So this is gonna be my backing for the washer to stop there. These side markers, I'll have to figure out the width. I think it's 27 and a half, but whatever, I'll double check that. So then I'll put this wherever on the side. And it's the same thing with here. I know I got a cross member underneath here. For that side, the same thing. So I'll just screw that down there and that'll be it. I pre-drilled those with those flarers. So in order to be able to go deeper, so my screws are not on top, so I actually go down. So that should do it. So it will stop my machine from spinning in the back and it will allow my doors to open as you can see even on this side so even if I have this here my door will still operate you know as it did before so it's just a question of lining up screw that in and let's see if it's gonna work so that's it I screwed everything around on my marks between my studs so I have 23 and a half which is the width of my washer hopefully it's gonna fit in there now the big gun has to come up Take my little muscle and try to bring that washer dryer back in there. So it's time to put my husband's handiwork to the test. Now, knowing my husband, he's pretty good at this DIY stuff. So I have faith that this is going to work and that we're not going to end up down in the creek because I'll tell you, this RV was shaking pretty bad. So stick around. We're going to let you see just how well Pierre put this in so that you can do it yourself in your RV. So then the next thing. All right, so I'm pulling a mat here. As you all know, Matt is always sitting somewhere on something. So here's the deal. This is what happened to us on this one. You all of a sudden push on that pedal and half of your valve stays open. Uh-oh, you know you got a problem. You take one of those quarter inch drive. That's gonna be an easy fix. It's to figure out what's your problem. You come up here, you take this little cap, we all had this little cap. There'll be a screw in the middle. You take your socket like remover. You remove this screw. That'll be a quarter inch. I got this little lever here that this should open and close my little valve inside my toilet to flush. So you push as you push that lever, it should do this. This opens the little trap in here to have your residue go down there. I got a little problem here. I'll remove this. Now get it out. So here's my culprit. This is broken. Cut off short, it's done. So this needs to go visit file number 13 in the garbage pail. Let's try to figure out where we can get a Dometic and have it installed. Through the magic of video, it is here. So we finally got a toilet, Dometic. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple of steps in order to be able to install this and it's actually pretty easy once you open up that box there's nothing much in there except your toilet itself and it's really light ceramic bottom but it's really light to take out of there so let's start by the beginning let's go shut off the water so that's the first thing you're gonna do because you're gonna have to unplug and unhook this toilet from its water source so seriously, really simple, easy. 
it just comes up. You just take this little thing out of there, and here's your toilet. Dometic, brand spanking new. Now let's go inside. Let's go bring the other one. See the quality of this? This is nice. It's ceramic, flush. Let's go take the other one apart and fix it. Seriously, it's really light. So don't stress about this. This is a DIY that you guys could do. So let's just bring this inside. So we're ready to work. I'll just leave it right here. And there's two things that you need to have to do this. So first of all, you need a 716 wrench. 99% of them will have those two bolts at the bottom on each side of the toilet. It's 716 wrench. And I'm bringing this rag because once you take that toilet out, you're actually connected to the sewer. So you might have a whiff coming up there. So I'm just saying, better be prepared than sorry. Let's get to it. So as you can crawl underneath here, there should have been my pedal, but that's broken. So I just put this wrench in there and start on screwing this so after i'm done taking those nuts out now i'm gonna go for the water so you got this fitting here that i'll just unscrew remember i shut off my water i might have a little bit of water but well, not even here's another step so you're about done now you're gonna be able to pull on this toilet and take it out of there remember put your rag or else you'll bomb the whole place all right, so here's the difference. Here's my new unit, here's the old one. As we can see, I've got a hose here that was easily hooked up to the floor plug. So this one needs to go here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bring it to the other one over there. I'll just plug this back in. As you can notice, I've got one of those shower on this one. Hmm, okay, this one didn't come with a shower. This one has a fitting like this. So here's your option for me. I'll just take this because it's just in tight in there and I'll just pop this out because this actually is just entered in sleeve rubber. It just pops out so you keep your handle. So what you do is you take this clamp out, you take this clamp out, you spread those, you know, those that are for pecs, you get that out of there and you just pull this hose well, you know how that's going to go. So I'm going to pull that hose out of there. I'm just going to pop this out. This one's the same thing. I do not undo this one. Well, this one is the new one. I'll keep it for spare in case, but I'll just unclip this one. And then, as everybody should have, because we all have pecs, so buy yourself a kit of those. Basically, this crimps and seals nicely, and you'll have a couple of sizes because we have those union and we have those angle for all the packs and all our RVs. So that's a good idea to have. And it costs, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks for this and probably 10 bucks for this. And I got some of those rings. If not, and you don't want to buy nothing, well, just go get yourself some regular plumbing collar and uh, that's it. You'll be in good shape. So let's get this done. To recap, I take this off, pull this up. This, you just have to pull on it like this see it's just a sleeve same thing with the other one you pop it out you open this crimp and just take your hose out and then you replace it with the other one so just keep this one in in case the other one fails at one point but mine already had the spigot so i want to keep it simple easy peasy now let's try to figure out how we're going to reinstall that in the floor now that i recrimp this in place that fixture put this one so now i got my hose i tighten up this one and now what i'll do i'll open my bags of goodies here that they left me a couple of covers for the toilet cover covers for the little bolt after you're done and in here you're gonna have those bolts because i took those apart and as you may notice now i've cleaned this put my glove Clean the whole thing, sanitize the whole thing. So I took all those bolts that will go in this slot that you'll slide back. When you take the other one out, you're going to see the bolts that were down there. So those two new brass bolts will slide in here. And here's your anchor. And here's your washers and your nut. So now let's grab this 
and try to put that on there. So now the only thing I need to do is to take this rag, which is all ready. And now you're gonna take this. I've got my donut underneath, so it's there. My seal's already there. I will try to align with my bolts so it goes right into my holes. So let me show you what it looks like from down there. So as you can see, you slide it down on those anchor bolts that you have, that washer, put your nuts, and repeat the same thing on this side. Put your washer, put your nuts, and then what you're gonna do, see my little water spigot is right here, which will go right there, and in the back here, well, self-explanatory, you're putting it back where it was before. Just tighten it back down. You don't need to strip or take pliers or nothing. You just hand tight it and you'll all be fine. So after this is all anchored back down, you'll take this, put your little caps on there, finish this off to see if it looks nice and your wife is happy about what you just did. Let's finish this off. So I want you to remember there's a seal underneath and this base is plastic. This is porcelain, but most of the time this is plastic. So don't overdo it to break or crack your base. So as long as it's tight, you can see that it's tight. This is not moving. It's not going anywhere. You're good. There you go. Now go turn your water and see if it's working. The medic makes it easy. Give yourself a break and give yourself a thumbs up. You can actually do this. I'm just saying, I believe in you. I count on you. And just remember, the medic's really easy to work with. And they have a lot of parts also. If ever something breaks, mine couldn't be fixed because it broke right in the pedal in that little square shaft. So it's plastic. You can't change that part. So that was my problem with this one. So let's finish this up and let's see if we look like a genius once we're done. All right. So now the ultimate test. I'm going to turn my water on. The ultimate test. Who knows how it's going to turn out. Oh, I can't believe it. It's actually working. Make sure you check, make sure nothing's leaking anywhere. If you're good to go, you're in good shape. Now you look like a genius. Remember. It's not that off. The destination is all about the journey. <laughs> if you like this video, we would love it if you would hit subscribe, give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment. If you don't know what to comment, just put C4BO, comment for Blue Ox. Thanks for watching.